Over in one of Nigeria's southern states, Akwaibom, local government councils have begun moves to boost their internally generated revenue weeks after their inauguration. The move followed the conduct of local government elections last October into the 31 councils and the subsequent inauguration of elected officials. Criticisms have often trailed local government councils over lack of initiatives in the uh, provision of basic amenities, a development which is usually blamed on lack of funds. With a tenure of three years beginning last December, many of the councils have stepped up efforts to boost revenue, including maybe increasing ticket prices for Ebom Air. We'll have to see how that uh, works out. Joining us uh, to discuss these uh, issues, of course, is uh, an analyst from ARM, Olamufe Olayemi, research analyst at ARM Securities. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us, uh, uh, Olamufe. Oh, the, re you. the refineries, uh, what do you make of those figures? 152 billion over 15 months. Uh, doesn't look good. Well, what's your take? Uh, quite massive, if you ask me. Um, I w of course, but if you look at it um, from historic, you will notice that um, Nigerians and um, oil finance have been operating below um, capacity. I mean, grossly below capacity um, over the last years. Um, five, five over the last years, as far as we can go back, um, and and that again speaks to. Um, how much of inefficiencies that comes when you have um, uh, maybe government and do um, critical aspects of the economy, you know. And again, it makes a case for privatization, if you ask me. Um, of course, there have been a lot of talks um, back and forth as to um, trying to revamp those refineries. Um, on top of it is um, um, doing like um, a cost appraisal as to how much it would it would be needed to bring them back up and running. But again, it's surprising to see that um, having locked up the refinery since January 2020 and up until now, um, I think we've, been, we've only been able to conclude for just the Portacot refinery, I mean, with the appraisers. Um, and that really casts doubts as to um, the January 2020, the 2020 um, um, target of bringing them back, um, back, back up and on. So again, it makes, it makes a case for privatization. Um, 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 it's, 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 it's a case of the industry being um, underinvested in, you know. They know that a lot of investors are not really um, comfortable. You know that there is a lack of trust, given a lack of clarity and transparency that um, that, that, that um, characterizes that space. As if you ask me, do, uh, what do you think of that target of uh, increased capacity? So I believe Melek Kiari, Group Managing Director of NNPC, has said 90% by 2023. What do you think? I, I, I think a little ambitious. I think very much ambitious. Um, if you take a look as to what um, um, the the the, the how much of capacity we've run for, for the past couple of years, 30%. Um, and now, um, no much of um, clarity as to what's going to be going forward. Um, so 90% 2023 looks way ambitious in my own view. Um, I, I, think, I think it's more like calling, more, calling, calling too much for a shot. Um, um, it looks quite unrealistic in, in my view. Mm. Um, I, I, think a little, I think little, not much can be done between now and 2023. You know, if after a year we've only been able to assess just one refinery, the protocol to find out. I think it just needs to be done. Thank you so much. All right, let's move from oil and gas over to uh, industrials, to cements. Uh, this uh, Money Central uh, report on Nigerian cement firms having uh, the largest profit margins uh, in the world. Help us understand how that's calculated. Is that net profit as a uh, percentage of uh, top line revenue? Yeah, so that's net profit over revenue. That's um, when you are accounting for cost after you must have made revenue. So cost from, um, from production, cost from operation, cost from financing as well. You know, you pay, you pay interest on debt. So after you must have net out those costs, um, the, the, the net profit over revenue is how you, you come about your net profit margin. How, how would you explain why cement firms in Nigeria enjoy these large profit margins compared to cement firms in, uh, in other countries? Yeah, again, um, it, it all boils down to um, the structure, you know, of, of the Nigerian cement space. Um, you agree with me that um, um, to start with, um, breaking into that space is quite expensive. Um, the cost of operations seems to be quite massive, and so no much of people can actually afford to probably start up investments, start up their own, um, their own um, cement lines, you know, in Nigeria. But apart from that is... Um, the um, oligopolistic nature of that, of that space. Um, you have a few players, few dominant players in that space. Um, when you pick the likes of Dangote Cement, um, Lafarge, and then Boa Cement, um, then you probably have go around the industry. So, you know, being, being, given the fact that we have just few suppliers in that space, it gives them a lot of, a lot of, a lot of um, um, it gives them a lot of leeway to actually raise prices, you know. Um, you know, in an area where you don't see, in a, in a space where you don't really see competition as such, um, you cannot take away the, the place of higher pricing, you know. Uh, and I think consumers don't really have a choice. Um, like I always say, um, it's either you buy or you don't buy. And uh, when there are no alternatives, you just have to buy. 
And again, if you look at the way the space is being structured, um, of course, we say they are com it's, it's competitive, um, yes, but it's kind of structured, like it's kind of um, um, fragmented. So for instance, um, you see uh, a brass cement having a lot of dominance in the northern space. Um, you probably see the likes of Dangote cements having its foothold in the southwest, you know, and maybe south-south as well. And so it's, it's more fragmented, and, and if you look at that as well, it then, it then gives a picture as to why they'll be able to raise, raise prices, you know, and, um, and, and do that more, much more comfortably. And also bear in mind that the art sector is quite protected. Of course, you, we, 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 are, we are aware that there is a ban on importation of cement. And so what we have to make do is what is produced locally. You know? So putting all of this together, it kind of explains why um, they have a lot of comfort you know, to risk pricing. Of course, if you look at the margins, like you rightly said, um, in Nigeria vis-a-vis -vis, um, other markets they play in, maybe in Pan-African markets or other markets in Africa, and like you said, in European markets as well, if you look at your counterparts in those, parts, in, those, in, those, in those segments, you agree with me that competition seems to play key role as to why we have seen um, these higher margins in Nigeria vis-a-vis -vis what is obtainable in other segments of other, other regions of the world. Excellent stuff. Very illustrative there, Olamo Fair. Okay, so that's high prices and so on. On the other side, on the investment side, do these large profit margins make the case for attractive stocks for these publicly traded cement firms? Absolutely, because um, what a lot of um, investors will look at at the end of the day is returns, you know, how much you can make from investments. And again, if you look at um, the, the opportunities in that space, um, bearing in mind the players, uh, how, how much of few players we have in that space, it then gives, um, it gives a sense as to how much they can still make, you know. Um, you agree with me that Nigeria is, um, we still have a lot of infrastructural deficits, you know, um, we, still need to, we still need to spend a lot more, you know, to bring our infrastructure at, 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 you know, up, up to speed. And um, you just have just, just few players positioned to annex these opportunities. So makes it, that makes it a very good case for investments, you know. Um, you know, it's, 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 quite, it's quite easy to make a call that um, you were expecting that in the near to medium term, these this corporates will continue to post decent numbers, you know, bearing in mind that we still have to invest and we don't just have uh, many of them in that space operating, so they can easily raise prices uh, and then, you know, of course, make decent profits. And I think it's also good to mention that um, if you look at the old cements, if you look at the cement companies in Nigeria, and maybe you want to compare to other segments, you know, um, in the market, since as if that is where we see the highest profits and margins, you know, uh, maybe the agro light space seems to come close, or maybe at par. But you wouldn't see this much of decent numbers as you see in cements, you know, in, in other segments of, of, of the markets. And that's because those segments are probably highly competitive, you know. They have more players in that space as well. Thank you so much for that. Let's switch gears to the uh, foreign direct investment and the latest uh, United Nations Conference on Trade and Development report. Can we blame this entire drop in FDI on the pandemic? Yeah, partly, yes. Uh, I, but I don't think entirely. Um, I think um, Nigerians um, low FDI influence is, is not just a 2020 story. It's been a story for historics now. Um, uh, we've always made the case that Nigeria attracts low foreign direct investments. A lot of investors are not really willing to take long positions, and for a number of reasons. Uh, when you look at Nigerians' infrastructure, like I, already, like I earlier mentioned, um, the, the operating environment seems to be a challenge in itself. You know, when you talk, when you think of um, electricity, um, a lot of corporates have to look for alternative sources, which is, for me, is more expensive than the normal regular, the, the normal power supply that comes from. You know, and uh, again, if you look at um, security issues, you know, um, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not a philanthropic. Um, well, it's, 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 it's a business, and so when you look at security issues and. Um, you not, not having so much clarity as to what government is doing to actually nip, nip it in the board, you know. It, 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 then, it then makes it hard for them to take long-term um, investment positions. Maybe what we've seen historically is people taking them um, short-term because they just can't do it within a short while, you know. And the whole number of these as well, when you from the FX on certain C, you know, um, you, you agree with me that it's hard to call what's going to happen in the FX markets in Nigeria. Of course, it's pretty hard because um, it's quite uncertain. You know, it's, 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 it's really, it's really been, um, been managed to a very large extent. Um, and and, and uh, apart from that, um, even regulations, you know, policy conflicts and back and forth when it comes to policies also makes it a hard call for investors to take um, long-term positions in the, in the country. So it, apart from the pandemic of 2020, uh, I think these other factors also play the role. Uh, of course, but I think because it's the 2020 year, a lot of emphasis will be on the pandemic. 
Uh, but minus the pandemic, we've always had these historic issues of um, low FDI influence in Nigeria. So uh, thank you for that. So Africa FDI inflows 2019 versus 20, or rather 2020 versus 2019, down 18% for Africa. Sub-Saharan Africa down 11%. Right. Nigeria down 20%. Can we recover? Or is the recovery based on everything you've just talked about now? Yeah, so can we recover? Yes. Um, again, it's conditioned on week thinking, um, I'm coming up to speed and then being able to um, provide a lot of comfort for investors. And like I said earlier, um, for an investor who wants to take a long-term horizon in Nigeria, I, I think the big question would be, one, um, do we have the operating environment? Um, if you look at what is happening in the Papa um, axis, you know, it's, it's, it says a lot as to you know, a number of companies having to deal with delaying supplies because of gridlocks and the rest. Um, if you look at what is the pockets of conflict across the nation, you can't really tell you know, who's going to be the next victim. You know? um, in, if, in the FX space, you, know, you also cannot tell a lot as to what, you can't, you can't really guess what to expect. You know? you, you, so I, again, up, until all these things are actually settled or you know, until we start to give comfort to investors on these funds, um, I, I think uh, we may continue to remain depressed. We may continue to see lower FDI inflow um, in the country. Thank you for that. Only got about a minute to go, Alam. If I want to get your take on what's happening in Acquire Bomb, where they're looking to raise, uh, look inwards to raise internally generated revenue. I don't know if they are going to increase ticket prices for their state airline. What do you make of what's going on in the uh, south south area of Nigeria with that state? Yeah, I, I think it shouldn't be just an Acquire Bomb thing. It should be um, what every state in Nigeria. I think most states in Nigeria should be looking into, um, and that's because. Uh, just minus the big wits, Lagos, Rivers, and the rest. Um, a number of states um, actually have very low high um, But for Acquire Bomb, it's a welcome development. Um, um, I, 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 think, I think, in a way, it, it, should, it, should, it should help to, to also improve the prospects of um, residents in Acquire Bomb, you know, um, help to create jobs, improve living standards. Of course, we now have a lot of companies, a couple of companies coming on stream, you know, from the plywood companies. Now you talk about the... Um, um, and the Ibom um, airline as well. Um, all, all of these things should, should count with regards to um, government's revenue. In that, but I think more can still be done. It's just a case of right. having the, uh, the right, right operating environment, you know, to allow them to um, so, um, so come, thrive. Come, yeah. o Olamo Feolayemi, ARM Securities Analyst, thank you, so research analyst, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your Thanks. time.